how can you be making over five hundred dollars per day through e-commerce dropshipping using TikTok ads selling viral e-commerce products well in this video i'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step process how you can start testing products how you can start building your campaigns and eventually start scaling those products now if you want to know how you can find these products i have got some product research videos on my channel so you can go ahead and look at those or you can leave a comment down below and i can film some more videos now my name is sebastian i have been doing e-commerce marketing for a very long time uh, and this channel is all about e-commerce marketing drop shipping and business related stuff so if you're interested in that do hit the like button and subscribe and stay until the end if you want to see some really interesting depth information so like i said in this video i'm going to be showing you how you can start creating your campaigns to start testing products now we're going to come back to tiktok ads in just a second but first of all i wanted to take you through this strategy that i have built uh, and if you want to get access to this there will be a link down below in the description you can get it for free you can download this for free uh, just click the top link in the description it'll take you to my website just put in your email and we will send you this download so let's get started this document is basically showing you the setup that you need to start testing your campaigns now i've had a lot of requests i have done a video like this in the past on how you can start testing your product campaigns but some people wanted an actual physical copy that they could keep on hand when they're creating their campaigns so i have listened and that is available for you all top link in the description so first of all, this let's take you through this document. This is day one product testing. Now this is set up for a different budget. You can change the budgets that you're willing to use. It really depends on how much budget you're willing to test. But I have set this up with uh, four ad groups at $40 per day. So that's $160 per day testing. Now. I'm going to go through some high tech advanced stuff towards the end of the video, which will limit how much we actually spend. We won't actually spend that. We'll probably be quite profitable by doing this strategy. But if you do find that's too much for you, you can reduce the spend. Now, one thing I will say is each ad group has to have a minimum of $20 per day in spend. So at least set aside $40 per day if you can, but we can get around that. So the first thing you want to do is create a campaign. You want to follow this audience testing structure. The first campaign is going to be audience testing and our second campaign is going to be creative testing. Now this is more of an optional thing. You have to, you know, within at least seven days or once you start making sales, you want to start setting up this campaign, but you don't have to set this up on day one if budget doesn't allow, but it's definitely worth setting up at some point. So what is the audience testing campaign structure? Well, you can see here, this is just a bit of a breakdown. We have a conversions campaign with two to four ad groups, $40 a day and three or four ads per ad group. Now, here is the actual structure. So when you download this, you can have this, you can sort of follow this in more detail, but we're going to have one campaign and we're going to have four ad groups within that campaign. This is going to be an ABO. We're not using CBO. So that one campaign will have the budget set on the ad set level. Each of those ad sets will follow this structure. We'll have a broad ad group, which will have no targeting, 18 plus age ranges, male and female, TikTok placement only. And then ad group two and three are going to be interests, but they're going to be behavior interests. So that's the seven day behavior. I'll show you, we'll set up a, a test ad group for this one, just to show you what I'm talking about. We're going to do 18 plus age ranges, male and female, TikTok only. And then ad group four is going to be interest three. Uh, and this is going to be 18 plus ages, male, female, TikTok only, but that's an interest ad group. So we're going to have three interests that we're testing and one broad, which has got no targeting at all. Now, the reason for this is we want to identify whether broad is going to work for us or whether we need to go more specific with our audience testing. Typically, you'll usually find that broad is the best way to go when you're starting testing just the way that TikTok works. But I always like to add in some more tests there just in case. You know, a lot of people say out there that you only want to be using broad, but sometimes I found some seven or eight ROAS interests that I've actually run alongside my broad uh, audience testing as well. And that can do incredibly well for your account and obviously your overall ROAS. The more ROAS you make, the more profit you make. So let's go ahead into the campaigns section. We're just going to build a test campaign. Now this is on an old uh, ad account, which is no longer working, but you can see here, we're just going to call this uh, testing one. You can give it whatever name you want. Uh, and then we're just going to leave conversion budget optimization turned off. Now, at the start, I mentioned that you want to have at least $20 per day on each ad group. You can see here on the testing, I've said there are four ad groups. You can test two to four. If you're going to test anything less than four, uh, the minimum has to be two. But if you're going to test two, you want to have at least this one. So you want to have broad and then you can pick one of these. So either one interest that's a behavior or an interest that isn't a behavior. Uh, and then you can start to add in things as you go along. But the very basic minimum is number one and number two. And then if you want to have three, you can do one, two, and three, or one, two, four, or one, three, and four. I mean, 
two and three are essentially the same, you just added a different interest. Uh, so that's the structure that we're gonna be using for this campaign. Now, say for example, you don't wanna be spending $40 per day, if that's too much for you, and you've come from Facebook testing where you can do $5 a day if you really wanted to, uh, here's how we're gonna do this on TikTok. This is a strategy that I use a lot, and it does help if you're limited on budget. I do this a lot with clients or uh, students that I'm helping. Uh, and also, by the way, if you want help, if you want to uh, sort of have a bit of one-on-one -on -one coaching, I do offer that. You can click the link down below, it'll take you to a Calendly booking call, and you can get on a call with me and we can discuss that. It's not free, um, but you can join. It's a sort of a communal coaching group that I'm building at the moment. Uh, so if you want my personal help, you can get that. You can go over to here and we can click on the budget. So this basically limits the daily budget of the campaign. This is not the actual budget that we're gonna be spending, but it's gonna be the budget that we're sort of limiting it to. So for example, if we had two ad groups at $20 per day, and we wanted to actually only spend $20 in total, we would set this number to 20. So regardless of what we've set on our ad group level, we will still spend maximum $20 per day. Now, this is a bit more of an advanced strategy, but it basically means you're not gonna blow through your budget. It also means that your ad groups may not spend equally. You may spend $18 on one ad group and $2 on the other one. So you wanna keep your eye on the ad groups and make sure you've got an equal amount of spend and you'll understand that the reason for that, uh, why that is in just a minute when we go through the rules. Um, also guys, if this video is going too quickly for you, like I said, you can download this strategy. It's gonna be available for all of you in the description. So click on there, download this strategy and you can follow through if you want to. Um, okay, they've changed it now so you can only do a minimum. In which case, if you want to spend uh, anything less than $40 per day, then you want to set up some rules, but we will do that in just a bit. So we're gonna continue. And now we're gonna start setting up the ad groups. In this situation, we're only gonna be setting up number two or number three. So we're gonna be demonstrating the behavior interest targeting. Everything else is exactly the same. You just don't use behavior or you don't have any broad targeting. So for example, broad targeting, we'll just do it really quickly. We'll select a pixel. So we'll just have this one. Optimization event, obviously we want to go for complete payment because that's what we're trying to get. We're trying to get purchases at the end of the day. We wanna make sure that our placement is just TikTok. We would only be spending on these ones you do, you'll see some very, very cheap clicks, but you won't see any conversions for these cam these uh, other ones. For this section, when I'm starting out, I like to leave user comment turned on and video download off. Now, the reason I leave user comment turned on is it gives me some good insight into customer um, opinions on my product. And then obviously I can then go ahead and add things to the website. If people have lots of questions or if people seem to think that it's a horrible product, then I'll stop running the ads because the general consensus is the community of people watching the ads don't want to buy the product. You know, if I'm getting lots of positive comments, a higher chance the product's going to work. If I'm getting lots of negative comments but some sales, there's a less chance of me being able to scale it. And at that point, you've got to make a judgment call based on how far you're willing to test before you become profitable. Then we want to come down here to custom targeting. Now, you don't want to go for automatic targeting. I haven't tried that. It's not really worth it. Go for custom targeting. You want to set your country. And if you want to work out how to use the United States, if you're in another country, so for myself, I live in London, but I can target the United States, do leave a comment down below and I can film a video on how you can get set up for that. Uh, if you want to, you want to download NordVPN. There is a link down below in the description. You want to set up a NordVPN account uh, and I'll take you through that in another video. You want to leave your genders open, so no limit. This goes for all four of our ad groups. All of them are male and female on our genders. There's nothing restricted on there. Age ranges, we want to do 18 to 55 plus. The reason for this is anybody in the 13 to 17 range are not really going to be buying. They're going to have to ask their parents to use their credit card. They don't really have their own credit cards or debit cards. So they're not really going to be purchasing themselves, which means it adds in an extra layer of complexity when you're trying to get a purchase. And at the end of the day, we're trying to get as many purchases as possible for as cheap as possible, which means we don't want to have restrictions or things that are going to slow down the flow for a conversion. So for the completely broad, we're going to leave everything else open. We're not going to touch anything. We're just going to put in our daily budget. And in this situation, it's going to be $20. And then we're going to leave everything else like this. Day parting is going to be all day. And we're going to go for lowest cost. Now, let's have a look at how we set up number two, three, or four. For these ones, everything else is exactly the same. So set it up like I've just demonstrated. But you want to add in your interest. So if we're going for number two or three, which are the behavior interests, we want to come down here and we want to click on people who've carried out the following interactions with a video. I like to say people who've watched until the end and I like to do a seven day period. 
that way we've got more um, the people who've watched in the last seven days are more relevant they're probably more targeted and more focused in that niche so for example if we're selling in the pet niche people who've watched pet videos in the last seven days are going to be better than people who've watched pet videos in the last 15 days the chances of people watching 15 days ago and still being interested in pets it could have been a fluke or they could be still interested in pets whereas if it's seven days chances are they've been watching them more regularly so they're higher quality audience that's just the way i've tested it it seems to work for me go ahead and test out 15 days as well if you want to but let's just get started here so we'll just search in um audience now I like to keep my audience sizes pretty large. You can see here this is 80 million people. I like to keep it at least over 10 million if possible. Now, some niches you won't be able to do that, but that way with a larger audience size, we're giving TikTok the opportunity to go out and find the perfect customers for us within that audience. If we limit that audience too small, which is a common misconception, people seem to think that if I say, for example, I'm looking for pets and then you narrow it down by having different interests, uh, and they have an audience size of 500,000, they seem to think that is exactly the audience they want to be targeting. Uh, and what will actually happen is you'll receive higher costs. TikTok won't be able to test and find people who will purchase. They'll be very restricted in that flow. So keep that open, make sure you're going for a high audience size. So what we've done here is we've just set up one interest. This is the interaction with the video, which is when I say behavior, this is the behavior one. They've since changed the naming, but it's the same thing. So one behavior category selected, that's all you want to do. So number two on here is already set up. We have one interest, one which is a behavior interest for seven days with 18 plus ages, male and female TikTok only. Now, if you're selling a product which is specifically for females, if it's those hair curlers, for example, mostly females will buy them, then obviously you can test just women if you wanted to. I like to keep it open, but go ahead and you can mess around with the genders a little bit if you want to. Now, for example, if we wanted to set up the uh, number four, which is just an interest, it's not a behavior interest, we want to delete this. We want to open interest and we want to search for an interest here. So maybe we can do dog. I don't really know if that's an interest on TikTok. Yeah. Doge, that'll do, right? Now, for example, this audience has got 24,000 people, so we wouldn't actually run to this audience. So if we want to find something bigger, we can try searching for pets again. Uh, yeah, here we go, pets, we can get rid of Doge, and that's 21 million. So that's a, that's a good enough size for us to start testing. So once we've done that, we want to click next, and then we will have an ad group set up with that interest. Now we've got, remember, we have one broad, which is completely open with no interest targeting. We have one interest, which is the one that we just set up. And then we have two behavior interests. Now, if you are limited on budget, you want to have one broad and then one interest, whether it's a behavior interest or normal interest, it doesn't really matter. Uh, that way you can then start testing some audiences and keeping things broad at the same time. And then what we want to do is we want to have at least four video ads well at least three to four video ads now if you want some information on how you can set up video ads you can go ahead onto my channel there are I think two or three videos on there on how you can do video ads so i'm not going to go into detail in that in today's video but you can watch those videos and that will give you some insights in hand to how you can find content for your ads and essentially the process is go onto tiktok find some content that's already been published and edit it together for your own ads alternatively order the product yourself and film your own content based on what's working on tiktok organic so we want to go ahead and build an ad. You can upload your content. You want to add your text here. You want to add your URL. Typically, this text can be anything you want, really, as long as it's 100 characters or less. You don't want to have too many uh, characters in there. I've split tested. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference. Something like on sale today, 50% off only, uh, is probably good enough to start testing with. Once you've done that, once you've built the ad, you want to duplicate it two or three more times, and you want to have three or four video ads. And then once you're done, you want to click Submit. So once you've set that up, you will have one campaign with up to four ad groups, depending on your daily budget. Those ad groups will have four ads, three or four ads on each ad group. Now, those three or four ads want to be the same on each. So what I recommend you do is set up the broad campaign first with all three or four ads set up, and then you duplicate that ad group two or three more times until you have the number of ad groups that you're willing to test. Each of those ad groups will be running the same ads. So the only thing we're testing in this campaign are different audiences. Everything else is the same. We're keeping the age ranges the same, the uh, gender the same, and we're keeping the placement the same. The only changes are the audiences, which then means once we come into our optimization strategy, which we'll be coming to in a minute, uh, you can then, uh, you know, you'll have an idea on which audiences are working, and which ones you can scale. 
So let's just move on to campaign two, which is the optional creative testing. Now I say optional because you don't have to set it up on day one, but once you're making sales, you want to have a creative testing campaign going. Now you wanna have this separate to your audience testing campaign, just because it keeps things clean and we have more control over our creative testing. And the structure for this one is pretty much exactly the same, but we're only gonna have one campaign with one ad group and we're gonna start off with four ads. Now, you have a choice here. You can either start off with the four ads you're running in your audience testing campaign, or you can be testing four different ads. Now, they can be the same ads with a different hook. You can be testing different music. You can be testing different creatives, whatever you want to test. So I've put some examples here. Each ad should be testing something different. Now, in this campaign one, where it's audience testing, the only variations we're making are the audiences, those are the interests. In our creative testing campaign, the only variations we want to be making are on the ad level. So for example, we can be testing unboxing videos, review videos, demo videos. Now, if we find an ad that does well in our audience testing campaign, or even in our creative testing campaign, we can get that ad, we can cut up a bit more, we can change it, we can change the hook, which is the first three seconds of the video. We can try different text, we can try different font, we can try different music. Maybe we can try different overlays. Anything that you think you can add or change to that video to create variations of your winning ad is gonna give you a higher chance. And essentially what we're looking for here is a formula of ads that are going to work. So I just jumped, that was thunder. Um, so we're looking for variations of ads that are going to work. Once we have those variations, essentially, you know, a month down the line, we'll have 20 or 30 ads that we know have worked or are going to work in our bank that we can start testing in the future. So ideally that creative testing campaign a month down the line will have a bank of ads that you know are working. Now, if the ads are making sales, leave them on. If the ads aren't making sales, turn them off. This goal of this campaign is not to scale these ads. It's just to find out if ads are gonna make sales profitably. Once they make sales profitably and once the audience testing campaign starts to lose performance, we can move these winning ads into this audience testing campaign. And if you want some more detailed uh, information on how we can scale, leave a comment down below and I will film a uh, similar video to this one in scaling and how we can actually scale our ads as well. So that's how we set up the, the say, this uh, creative testing campaign. Now I want to go into optimization. This is sort of day two onwards. This optimization is the most important part of running ads. And this is where a lot of people go wrong and start to lose money. So please pay attention to this step. And like I said, if you want to get this, you can click the top link down below in the description and you can go ahead and download this file that you can have on hand, print it out, stick it on your monitor, wherever you want to put it. So that it's on hand when you're optimizing your campaigns. Alternatively, if you want me to teach you on how to run this personally, you can join my personalized coaching plan. It's not a one-on-one, -on -one, it's a group coaching plan. It's not free, but you can go ahead and click a link down below. It'll be the second link in the description. You can go ahead and book a call with me. We can get you set up with that. But let's go through this a little bit more. So these are the optimization rules and you want to follow them pretty much religiously. Eventually you will have these stuck in your brain. You'll know exactly what they are. You won't have to actually have a look at this document, but for now you'll have it in front of you. First of all, you want to optimize your ads first. So let's come on to our, let's come on to the campaign section of TikTok ads and we'll go through a campaign that I have set up in the past for this ad account. Now, obviously the ad account has been disapproved, but we're using it for education purposes only. So let's have a look at this one. This is a audience testing campaign here in the ad group section. So this is obviously a random date range that I've selected. You can see here, it's just filtered by cost there are loads of different audiences being tested. Now, let's say we wanted to optimize this campaign. First of all, we want to look at these rules. Well, ad cutting rules, that's the first thing we want to look at. So we don't even want to look at the ad groups. Now, you'll probably only have two or three ad groups on your campaign, so it'd be much easier to do. But let's just say, for example, we we're optimizing this ad group. So we wanna click into the ad group and we wanna have a look at the ads within this ad group. Now, if you guys have been veterans of this channel, you'll know about this product, you'll know about the strategy that we tested. Uh, you can go ahead and watch some more detailed videos on that. They're all on the channel if you want to see some more information. So what is the first rule in the ad optimization? Well, if the cost per click is greater than 60 cents, turn off the ad. So these are all cut the ads if some or all conditions are met. Always optimize the ads first. So. We don't have to have all of these conditions met to turn off the ads. You know, at a certain point, you have to make your own decision based on the data that you've got in front of you, but this is a good benchmark to be based, basing your decisions off. So 
Let's have a look at these ads. Well, for starters, none of these have a cost per click greater than, greater than 60 cents. So check, that's fine, we can leave the ads on. Now let's check the click-through rate. Is it less than 1%? Right, well, that really depends. So click-through rate here, no, nothing's left than 1%. 1%. Obviously, some of them are 0%, but that's because they've got no spend or no click. So you can leave those, ignore those. Uh, anything that's got zero is basically hasn't got any spend. So let them get some spend before you make a decision. Now, the click-through rate is an odd one because sometimes if your cost per click is less than 60 cents, your click-through rate could be less than 1%. So the most important rule out of the click-through rate and cost per click is the cost per click. At the end of the day, the more clicks you can get for the same amount of money, the better you're going to do. So you want to make sure your cost per click is lower before your click-through rate is higher. Now, that's not to say your click-through rate doesn't matter. It does, but it's less important. The next thing we'll look at is your spend. Now, a lot of people make this mistake. They see an ad group's not working, so they turn off the ad group. But what they don't realize is buried in that ad group, they're actually making some profitable sales on an ad. Now, although a lot of the optimization through the TikTok algorithm happens on the ad group level, that ad group will be spending budget on ads based on what TikTok thinks. And TikTok is not always right where it puts its budget. So if we look at this as an example, we can head over here to total complete payments. So here, two payments were made at $27 per purchase. And if we look at the total budget spent on the ads, $55 out of 61 was spent on one ad. Now there are seven ads in this ad group. You'll probably see this yourself, which is why I only say test three or four ads in an ad group because the rest of them just won't get spent. Now you wanna make sure that the spend on that ad group is not greater than 50% of the average order value or if you know your break-even price, it's not greater than or equal to your break-even price and your sales are zero. So in summary, if your ad has spent the break-even price of your product or 50% of the average order value of your product and the sales are zero, turn off the ad. If, however, you have spent the average order value or the break-even, depending on which one, you know, average order value, so 50% of the average order value will not necessarily be your break-even. This is just if you don't know your break-even. Now, in most cases, people know their break-even. So if it's spent your break-even and it has made a sale, then worst case situation, you're building data on your account. You're not losing money, so keep the ad on. The best case situation is you're probably spent 50% of your break even, which means your margins are there, you're making profit on that ad, so you want to leave it on. Basically, anything where you're losing money on the sale, you want to turn off the ad. The second thing you wanna look at is if your daily budget of the ad, that should be ad, not ad group, has been spent on just one ad and the sales are zero, turn off the ad. So in this situation, this is a good example, this ad here, has spent $55. Now the daily budget of this, for example, is $60. It has spent almost the daily budget of the ad group, not the ads, the ad group. Now in this situation, it's made two sales. Both of those sales are unprofitable, so we want to turn off the ad. If it had spent $55 and made no sales, we turn off the ad. All we're doing here is we're allowing TikTok for day two to spend the budget on the rest of these ads. Maybe this one's going to do better, we don't know. So that's how we optimize the ads. Now, you can, if you want to, start optimizing for ad carts and initiate checkouts on the ad level. Typically, I don't like to do that. I like to just keep it with these four. And then we move to the ad group cutting rules. And I apologize, this is quite a long video, but there is a lot of stuff I wanted to go through. So let's head over to the ad group. Now, we're going to use this specific one as an example. Again, let's just filter by selection so it's easier for you all to see. We're going to follow the exact same strategy again. So you can see here, cut the ad group if some or all of the conditions are met. So for example, if the spend is equal to the daily spend and sales are zero. So if we've spent, sent, uh, set the budget as $60 per day and it's spent $60 and it's made no sales, turn off the ads. Sorry, turn off the ad group. Now, even, even if there are ads in here that are looking like they're gonna do well, turn off the ad group. If the sales are zero and the spend is too high, turn it off, you're gonna lose money. Just don't let it optimize. Far too many times people will say, actually, you know, after three or four days, you'll start to get data, you'll start to optimize, then you'll then that's when you start optimizing. No, with TikTok ads, if you're not making sales in day one, it's not gonna work, turn it off. You'll save yourself a fortune. Second thing you want to look at is the spend, whether it is, if it has made a sale, or if it hasn't made a sale, you then want to have a look at your break even price. So again, same as we did with the ad level, but on the ad group level, if your ad group has spent break even or more and the sales are zero, turn it off. So essentially it's the same as the initial rule, but it's, it's a bit more focused. There is one situation where you want to look out for. If you have optimized your ads, you've turned off an ad and you now want to let the other ads have more spend 
and then you come on to optimize the ad group and you have a higher you know your spend is greater than your break even but you you want to keep it going obviously don't turn off the ad group you know that's when you need to make your own judgment call so if you have started to make some sales and it's unprofitable on the ad group and you're not comfortable with letting it run anymore, you don't want to let the ads keep testing other ads that are already in there, turn off the ad group. So essentially what these rules are saying are if the ad group is unprofitable, turn off the ad group. The only exception to that rule are is if you have some ads in there that you want to keep testing. The next thing is you want to go through your KPIs. So again, your cost per click, if it's greater than $1, well, in this case, no, our cost per click is four cents. So we're not going to turn off the ad group. Secondly, click through rate. Is it less than 1%? Well, no, it's 8.5%, so we're going to leave it on. Then we get into the more detailed stuff, which is, again, why if you want me to help you run your ads, you can book a call with me. It's the second link in the description. It's not free, but I'll help you run your ads. It's a group coaching thing that I'm building at the moment where I'll take you through how you can be. It's more of a coaching rather than done for you. It's sort of done with you type of thing. Uh, but this is how we start optimizing our ad group based on add to cart metrics. Now, this really comes down to personal preference. You either optimize on conversions. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear the thunder, but there's a, a massive storm going on at the moment. Um, so if you are making conversions on your ad group, you want to see if it's profitable or unprofitable. If it's profitable, let it run. If it's unprofitable, then you optimize your ads. Now, if you see, for example, you've not spent 50% of your AOV or you've not spent up to your break even, but you're a bit unsure whether it's going to work or not, whether you should cut it. This is when these two rules come in. So I'm going to put these in bold. These two rules, realistically, you only want to be using if you are unsure if it's going to make profitable sales. So this comes down to sort of making sure you're not overspending on something or you're prematurely turning things off based on what the data tells you. This can be incredibly powerful and it can keep your ROAS very, very high, but it does require you to be very focused on the account. So let's have a look here. If the cost per click is less than $1, i.e. it's good, but the add to cart cost is greater than 25% of your break even, turn off the ad group. Now, again, going back to the, the caveat here, this is obviously if let's say your a break even is $40, and you haven't yet spent that, you can have a look at your add to cart cost. So you can say if my add to cart cost is greater than 25%, for example, if it's $40, if your, for, if your break even is $40, but your add to cart cost is greater than $10 and you haven't yet spent $40, then you know it's probably going to be unprofitable. So you can turn off the ad group. Now I've, I've written in here, e.g. break even is $10, add to cart cost should be less than $2.5 ideally. At this point, make a judgment call. Second thing is the initiate checkout. So if your cost per click is less than $1, but your initiate checkout cost is greater than 50% of your break even, i.e. if you have a $10 break even cost, your initiate checkout cost should be less than $5. Then if it's, you know, it doesn't fit within these rules, then turn off the ad group. Now, if you have any issues with that, leave a comment down below and I can help you out with that. These are some of the sort of higher, more advanced cutting rules and optimization rules that people don't really talk about on ads. They usually say set up an ad if it makes sales add more budget if it doesn't turn it off uh, and it's not as binary as that there's a lot more information that goes into it and a lot more work that goes into it so guys i hope it was good and useful for you I hope this video taught you some stuff i hope there was some useful information like i said if you want to download this you can it is the top link in the description if you want me to work with you directly in coaching you click the second link and you can book a call with me i will take you through everything we'll take you through any details and questions you've got we have a call once a week with all of our students uh, and then we can go through any questions q a on there there will also be some coaching stuff available and materials available for you. Plus, I'm a point of contact that you can contact pretty much any time and I can help you with any questions that you have. So if that's something you're looking for, looking to invest in yourself and your business, then by all means, do book a call with me and we can get you set up with that. But it's more of a one-on-one -on -one coaching slash group coaching. You join a community of people who are like-minded. So guys, I will see you in the next video. If you've got any other ideas, let me know.